coming to you from North Atlanta Studios and brought to you by Mesmerize Media. It's the Advantage of Adversity podcast. And now, here's your host, Glenn Carver. Hello, everyone. It's Glenn Carver, your host for the Advantage of Adversity podcast, coming to you from the North Atlanta Studios, produced by Mesmerize Media. And uh, maybe you know, maybe you don't know, the mission of this podcast is to highlight stories of inspiring people who have been through uh, really significant personal or professional adversity. And in spite of that adversity, they've chosen, they've made the decision decision to find the opportunity, maybe even the advantage in the adversity. So, uh, hey, today we've got another incredible guest with a phenomenal story. Um, and uh, we're going to bring on in just a moment, Rob Canerium. And uh, because Rob and I have actually never met in person, he lives in Bradenton, Florida. Uh, we've had a phone call, but haven't met in person. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat and read his bio off my cheat sheet. But uh, as the host, I'm allowed to do that. So I'm gonna bring on Rob Canerium. Uh, Rob was diagnosed with stage four. I'm familiar with that diagnosis. Stage four squamous cell urethral cancer. It's a mouthful. In 2016, he had an 8% chance of survival with surgery. Um, and Rob had two choices, and I know about these two choices as well. Uh, conventional treatment, meaning, you know, chemo, radiation, surgery, or alternative holistic treatment. That's the one I picked. Um, and through a plethora of protocols and health practices, Rob went from stage four cancer to cancer-free in 13 weeks. Praise God. Uh, since then, Rob has been cancer free and uh, living a fulfilling life with his wife, Cheryl, his son, Alex, and most importantly, uh, their dog, Skittles. I can't wait to meet Skittles. Um, he's now an advocate for all things health related, and uh, he truly embodies the power of positivity and takes every day as a gift as I do. So uh, Rob Canerium, welcome to the Advantage of Adversity podcast, my friend. How you doing? Thank I'm, you. I'm doing great. You you look wonderful. You look healthy and you're glowing and so glad that we've uh that we've connected and honored to have you on the podcast to share your story because I'm absolutely convinced it will inspire somebody and uh that's what we are all about now, Rob, right? Inspiring people and helping people move through adversity. No, oh, absolutely. And you know, one of the things when I asked God in the universe, what is my purpose? You know, especially with that ridiculous 8% chance of survival with surgery, which I didn't do. Um, and it was to help others. It was yeah, it's yeah. to share my story. It's to tell, you know, help people understand what the stages of cancer are and then try to help them, you know, and there's three stages. It's mind, body, and spirit. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So, Backing up a little bit, uh, you're living in beautiful Bradenton, Florida. Where, yeah. where, where are you from originally? Do you want my smart answer? You know, my smart answer is my parents, right? Yeah, uh, yeah that's good. I, I moved. I, I was born in Bronx, New York, but I moved down to Miami when when I was like four and a half years old. So okay. like 1963, and okay. uh, and yeah, but it was living down there and. Uh, 2006, seven went up to Atlanta area and 2014 came back. Awesome. I've never been to the Bronx. I've been to the city, uh, not to the Bronx, but, uh, I got a test for you. Pronounce H U G E. Huge. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> you nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> When did uh when did you and Cheryl meet? How long have you been married? So Cheryl and I met in fall of eight, 1983. Okay. Um, Great so, year for music. But, and actually, it, it, and there's a song, and I tell me she was working as a cocktail waitress. You know when I met when I met you. So she was that was her, her second job. She was also an administrative assistant for a big uh, department store chain called uh, Bird Eines or Jordan Marsh. Okay. And um, 
We've been married since May of 1985, so 18 years. Oh, great. Great. So how yeah. old is Alex? Alex is 35, and okay. he lives in New Orleans. He's an old soul. He oh, loves great. the music. He loves the culture. He loves the the food. So he's, uh, yeah. That's, does he have a guest bedroom? No, not here. <laughs> I mean, for me, for me to visit him in New Orleans. Oh, yes. No, if you think a couch is a guest bedroom, I, I'm a, one with sleeping on a couch. Yeah, that's a that's uh, New Orleans is a uh, that's a that's a wonderful and unique spot on the earth for sure. Yes, absolutely. And Skittles, what kind of dog is Skittles? Skittles is a a, a pets in distress dog so she found us we say but she's a, a part greyhound um chow chow and strafford terrier hmm. sounds like me a mutt yeah exactly well, we're all mutts right <laughs> I, I don't know that sorry <laughs> yeah, that's great well hey well thanks for the background um so let, let's jump in to your story which uh, sure. is, is amazing so squamous cell urethral cancer now having been diagnosis having been diagnosed myself in february of last year i've heard of lots of types of cancer and diagnoses never heard of that one uh, how rare is that and what was your state of shock i just heard that by michael jackson on the way down here what was your state of shock when you heard that you had that condition so you know things happen in your life for a reason um um, just like people come into your life for a reason, a season, a lifetime. That's right. And I, to go back to, you know, how it was diagnosed, um, I had been getting up, you know, going to the bathroom a lot, you know, and the commercials say, hey, you know, get Flomax. So I went yeah. to my doctor and said, hey, I need Tamisil, you know, or Flomax. And uh, we were talking and I told him, that was May of 2016. And I told him that on Super Bowl Sunday, I re I'd remembered that I had a couple of drops of blood when I urinated and I never saw it again. So I figured, okay, I'm in my 50s. Maybe I had a kidney stone. Right. And, but, it, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm watching, watching, watching. Never happened again. And he looked at me and he said, that's not normal. I'm going to send you to a neurologist. Went to a neurologist, and as he's touching me, he found something all the way down by the shaft. And, yeah. and, yeah, and he's like, you know, have you ever? And I'm like, I don't touch myself like a female, you know, test for breast cancer. And, right. you know, no. Um, and we had a... MRI done. Um, and that's when we were told that it was in not it was in my urethra, my lymph nodes and in my hips. Wow. And he's like, you know, there's so I started looking at it on the internet, there was only 600 documented cases in the world. Unbelievable. You got lucky, huh? <laughs> oh, gosh, yes. Wow. So um, he had sent me to, can I mention the cancer centers? Of course. Wait, open, open rain here. Thank you. <laughs> you say whatever you want to say, my friend. So he, he sent me to Moffitt Cancer Center. Um, and you know, that I was told that they were in, you know, um, that they were open to a lot of different things that they would listen to. They were compassionate. I'm like, this is great. I go in there and he basically tells me that I would have to be go on to a 24 seven chemo drip, go home, go home for three weeks, come back and do that two more times. Sure. It sounds like standard of care, right? So I'm thinking going, 12 weeks of chemo and relax and rest. And uh, then I would do major surgery and then do radiation. And I'm looking at him going, a one full week of chemo? I said, that is, that is crazy. 
I said, there's got to be another way. He said, no, there isn't. And I, I showed him a two people in Europe. One was in his late 40s. It was a male and a female. They both had it. They squamosal urethral cancer, and they were both in remission, and they didn't have surgery. And they were in remission for 19 months. And I said, okay, what about this? And he looked at it and he said, nope, it's not the same. I'm like, I'm going to sell you to cancer, right? Yes. He says, yeah. well, your tumor's 10 millimeter centimeters and theirs is five. And I'm like, so what? Let's just try it. Right. Um, and it was a chemo radiation protocol. Um, but I'm like, Hey, if they're in remission for 19 months, it, there's gotta be something good about this. Right. He said, no, he said, if you don't do it, I am um, what we say, then, um, you'll be dead in six months Wow! and you are going to die from internal bleeding. The tumor is going to burst. Um, and we're crying. Sure. You know, we're sitting there crying, just sure. like, what the heck? And and going back to even my doctor when he says, you got stage four cancer, Cheryl and I, my wife, we're crying. We're, and, sure. and it's like, oh, my God. Um, and then you start going into research mode. That's when yes, you, you start learning, okay, yeah. stage four is not a death sentence. No, it's not. Thank you. Stage four is just how much is it spread? It, you know, stage one is in the main area. And if it starts moving, well, there's your two, three, and four. Right. It's a uh, label. It's not a death sentence. Thank you. Yeah. So we left there crying and came back and said, no way, this isn't going to work. Actually, I told the doctor, I said, I said, this is, I said, there's no way. I said, so I'm going to be dead or want to be dead by the second round. Yeah. And I said, and if I'm going to do surgery, I, and I looked over at my wife, I said, I said, she's going to have to take care of me for the rest of her life. I says, that is not living. He says, well, you're going to be alive. I says, what is your definition of alive? Yeah. And quality of life. And, and quality of life. He says, and, and then I looked at him, I said, okay, two, two questions. Isn't it true that if you do chemo and radiation that you can get another type of cancer later on? He said, we will deal with that when we get yeah. to it. He didn't say no. Of course. <laughs> of course. And I'm sitting here just going, look, I'm in sales. I got long-term and short-term goals. And cancer is not a short-term goal. And if I'm going to have to fight a different type of cancer in three to five years, I don't know if I want to subscribe to that. Right. I understand. And, you know, and then when he said, I says, well, you know, my wife will be taking care of me. He goes, well, at least you're going to be living. I says, what is living? Yeah. Living is not having, like you said, quality of life yeah. is not yeah. having someone take care. Well, you know, if I may get on my soapbox for 17 sure. seconds, sure. nothing incenses me more than anybody in a, let's just say a white coat that has the gall or audacity to put a time stamp on someone else's life. And we talked about this on the phone because, you know, the mind literally has, literally has the power to kill us or heal us. And if, so, if a respected figure tells somebody, Rob, that's not as mentally tough as you and I, that they have three to 12 months to live, the reality is they might buy into that and die in three to so, four months to the exactly. day. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, praise God you didn't buy into that, uh, you know, to that assessment. Yep. It just really, really offends me. So going back, we went back, my urologist sent me to a radiologist on a Friday and my, and an oncologist on Monday. I go into the radiologist's office and he comes in all excited. He goes, you won't believe what I just read. And he pulls out this 
study how to cure squamous cell urethral cancer without surgery. Hmm. Now, mind you, this is within 10 days of seeing Moffitt Cancer Center, right? Okay. Okay. So that's a that's a Friday, and I pull up this that one study I shared with Moffitt, and I says, "Is it is it this?" And he goes, "It's very very similar." I said, "Okay." Monday, I see my urologist, my oncologist, and he goes, "You won't believe what I read over the weekend." So now I'm showing what Dr. Silverman, the, the radiologist, showed me. He goes, "Where'd you get that?" <laughs> I'm like. Have you been talking to Dr. Silverman? He goes, I know him, but no. He says, I read this over the weekend. Well, I've been praying to God in the universe to, and I intertwined the two, um, to give me a sign. Sure. And I know chemo and radiation kills. I know it. I, 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 I And my wife... Turn me on to Ty Bollinger's The Truth About Cancer. Sure. And if anybody hasn't seen it, please look at it. You'll, you'll, you'll learn a lot. And I, 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 I'm, the, I'm like sitting there. Now, mind you, I'll back up just a little bit. They did take a biopsy. And... Within three weeks of that biopsy, my tumor doubled its size. So now you have the tumor pressing up against the wall of the urethra. Sure. And I was, in, I was in pain. Sure. I had to have a towel, not a towel, but a T-shirt, like a donut if I was laying on my stomach. Ugh. And, you know, I, and we had been looking at all types of places in, um, in uh, Arizona, Mexico, um, you know, all these holistic places. And I looked at my wife and I said, you know, I said, uh, holistic and, and alternative takes a little, takes a little while, takes longer. Right. I says, I'm, in pain. I'm in pain. I said, what I feel I need to do is to do a little bit of that chemo and radiation. And I just do it as a jump start. And as soon as the tumor starts reciting, I'm quitting. Got it. In the meantime, I'm changing my diet. I'm taking apricot seeds. I'm sure. juicing. I'm doing all the Sounds things. Sounds like my daily routine. Yep. <laughs> you you know you get rid of all the whites. You get rid of all your sugars. You're yep. you know um, I was anemic, so I needed to get my my red blood blood count. Uh, um, I found a spiritual slash energy guy in sure. Bronson, Missouri. He was sending in his angel's hands or vibrations, raising my vibrations, talking to me about getting rid of stress in my life. Yep. And, you know, and I tell people there's that saying, if you continue to worry, you're going to get an ulcer. Well, there's, if there's a saying, there's got to be some truth to it, right? Yes. Um, the second thing, if you want to be visual, think of every single person that became president. I don't care how old they were. In nine months, their hair is gray. Yeah, that's phenomenal. It is. Right? Yeah. So yeah, it is. If, if that's what stress is doing to the inside of your body, to the outside of your body, what is it doing to the inside, right? Yeah. yeah. So are you saying there's something wrong with gray hair? Not at all. Okay. <laughs> it looks good on both of us. Ah, you're kind. <laughs> but, so, I, but I'm just saying, think about how quickly their hair changes. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly right. Exactly uh, right. Ours was a natural progression. <laughs> yes. Yes. No stress involved. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so I got to, I got to bring this up. Maybe you're about to bring it up, but I, I got to bring it up first as the host of the show. And, um, you had one of your doctors or somebody recommend guys, you're going to cringe. Just, I'm, I'm warning you, you're going to cringe, but Rob, one of your doctors recommended as part of the, uh, treatment to, uh, let's just say, remove your manhood. Oh, yep. how in the world did they think anybody would go for that? I know when I when I saw one of the 
when I went to one of the top cancer treatment centers in Atlanta early on, they told me that uh, doing radiation down near my rectum, one of the side effects would possibly be erectile dysfunction. And that's about when the conversation ended and I never saw them or talked to them or went back. So that what you rec was recommended to you, that's a whole nother level. How did no. you, I mean, when they told you that, what ran through your head and what came out of your mouth? Well, first, f first, my, my, my legs went together. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh. no way. You know, and they're like, well, we can reconstruct it. And oh my in, God. in my funny mind, I'm like, well, honey, you know, <laughs> oh. but, but yeah, no, I mean, that's, yes, you're absolutely right. You know, it's, uh, that that wasn't even that that wasn't even going to be a an option and and you, you know when you think about it you know eight percent chance of surgery eight percent chance of survival with surgery and I was just in an effort mode you know yeah. um, and it's like no I'm I'm going to beat it it's not going to beat me Damn and my, brother. my mantra was you know that was that was it. Um, and the other thing was that I, I, I know I shared it with you was Jim Carrey and Dumb and Dumber when he asked Mary, what's the chances of, of them going out? And I'm like, you know, she said one in a million. He's like, yes, so I got a chance. Uh, one of the great lines like, of all time. Right? Yeah. And I'm like sitting there going, if he is ecstatic about one in a million, 8% is better than one in a million. It's a lot better. By Georgia oh. math, it's almost double. Right. So I'm like, I'm like, you know what? I got this beat. And and I just I just got into this positive attitude mode. And um I love it. Yes. Yes. Um, that is so critical because so much of healing is mental and emotional and you know, one of the big curveballs we've learned, my wife, Lisa, and I, and through all this, she's become a certified cancer coach, but we've realized that every cancer has a unique emotional root. So dealing with all that is huge. You know, you know, chemo and surgery don't, chemo, radiation, surgery do not address the emotional root of a cancer. And uh, as I've learned from, you know, Dr. Joe Dispenza, I went to a couple of his retreats last year, um, you know, every form of dis-ease, D-I-S-E-A-S-E, dis-ease is a function of low frequency mm -hmm. rooted in emotions, yep. typically negative emotions. So I commend you that you went real positive as opposing to go real negative because it's a choice. Yes. Now, you know, I, I tell people you have to believe in your path. You know, I commend you by going 100% natural. I always think about what if, right? Yeah. But I was scared. You sure. know, I, you know, squamous cell is a very, very aggressive cancer. And, you know, the more you read about it, the more, you know, um, you don't know, right? You know, it's, oh, there's only 600 documented cases in the world. And I, and, you know, you hear about squamous cell and you, you, you hear that it's a very, it's, it takes a long time to, to, you know, come out and produce itself or show itself. But then once that happens, I mean, that with the, with the doubling of its size in three weeks after the biopsy, that scared me. Sure. You, know, you start wondering how fast is this going to be? spreading in my body. Of course. I mean, who, who, who wouldn't get into a state of fear over that? So how, what effect did it have on Cheryl? I know, I know the effect all this has had on my wife. How did she handle it emotionally? She, I tell you what, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here. She yeah. was, she Amen was, that, brother. she was a warrior. She did a lot of research. Um, um, and I do know that there was some tension in there when I made that decision to do the chemo and the radiation, but I believed at that time that I could incorporate 
chemo, radiation, holistic, spiritual, energy, juicing, Chinese, sure. acupuncture, sure. put it all together, you know, and they could all work together. Um, and in hindsight, I tell people that God allowed my orchestra to play a beautiful symphony. And would I get rid of that little triangle ding? No, because I don't know if it worked. Yeah. Well, right? Well, you hey, know, you're here. So it worked. Yes. And I know neither one of us will ever give medical advice. And obviously a cancer diagnosis is extremely unique to everybody. And everybody chooses, chooses their own path and their own treatment protocol based on what they feel is right for them. I mean, Lisa and I are convinced that if I had chosen chemo after 96 days in the ICU and the depleted physical state of my body, we believe chemo would have killed me. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of times people do a blend. So I'm just, I'm so grateful that, uh, you picked the right blend and, and that you're here well, the with, with, with your manhood. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. But, but I did get that second part that you were talking about, you know, um, you know, with the, uh, you know, not being able to use it as well as it, I had, um, that's the bad effect of chemo and radiation. Um, but I only did it for five weeks, right? I did chemo five weeks. That's okay. it. That's better and, than 20. Huh? That's better than 20. Oh yeah. And the, and, and the radiation, the, the radiologist was like, you know, no, you need to continue. I'm like, I'm doing like, no, I don't. <laughs> I, I know I don't. I said, I, I told him, I think, well, what happened was my energy spiritual guy, when he was sending in the vibrations, he told me my tumors in two, within two and a half weeks, my tumors were down 50%. Wow. Now, mind you, I was also doing cannabis oil and the THC part of the oil is, is supposed to help kill the cancer. The CBD part of the oil does two things. It helps you take it two hours later um, and the reason for that is it, 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 it helps keep it from spreading, but then it also helps lower the, the THC effect. So it keeps okay. you in a nice, even keel. Um, and you don't smoke it. Smoking it burns the medicine. So you do suppository, sure. either suppositories or sublingual. Um, and I truly believe that that all that were, you know worked very very well as an entourage effect. Uh, but two and a half weeks into it, uh, I, he told me my tumors were down fifty percent. And I go into the doctors, and they're like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. Yes. And when they said that, I knew it wasn't the chemo and radiation. <laughs> right. I knew it was everything else that I was doing. So my wife, Cheryl, was like, you, you promised me you would quit. And I said, I said, honey, it's two and a half weeks. I said, that is such a short time. Yeah. Yeah. I said, let's just finish out the month. You know, just, just put a month behind us. Well, like that... Um, Meatloaf song, uh, Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Sure, sure. That was that was the worst. You know, it's like you know, I'm praying for the end of time. That right. next 17 days was the worst days of my life. And oh. um, yes, I was sick mentally. If I I prayed to God that if tomorrow was anything like today, please take me. Mm. And as in men fashion, take me in my sleep. Yes. Because we, don't, we don't want pain, right? Correct. So. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> and um, five weeks, so two and a half weeks later, he goes, your tumors are down 75 and 90%. And that's when I was like, no more. Done. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, I'm so glad it's, it's all worked out. Um, just, just an amazing story. Obviously the, uh, 
the purpose of this podcast and the conversation is to help people move through adversity and find the opportunity and advantage in adversity. What, what have you learned? I would say at a high level, but really where the rubber meets the road, Rob, what have you learned through your experience about dealing with adversity that you could offer some insight to the people who will be watching this uh, con or listening to this conversation? First of all, if you have no control over it, you know, I, and I, I tell people there's two paths to go. You know, you get adversity, there's change in the work. You could A, bitch and complain. Right. Continue to complain, continue to complain. You are a Debbie Downer. No one wants to be around you. You're, you're not happy going to work. And that's one way. Number two, absolutely. Bitch and complain. Good. Be cathartic. Get it out of you. Then work with it. Right. You know, look, you can't change it. So you work with it. Two weeks later, change is behind you. And you are just looking ahead and being, and you're happy. So you have that same situation. Just look at it and go, you know what? It is, it is what it is, you know? And I don't want to say that a hundred percent because if you can change it, then change it. If you right. can't change it, well, you got to live with it. Um, and and you, you can't stress anymore and wake up every day with a different outlook um with gratitude mm. one thank, of my favorite words thank you know there's there's that book uh Rhonda Byrne the secrets and if and it's it's great because every day she wants you to to be thankful for 10 things and you're thinking going how do I how do I have 300 things that I could be thankful for in a month yeah but they but they don't have to be big you know Thank God. Thank goodness. I got, got eyes that I could see the blue sky. You know, That's thank right. you for having, you know, crumbs on the, on my floor because that means I got something to eat. Right. Yeah. You know, um, and, and just be happy, you know, say hello to people. You would be surprised that a yes. smile, a smile gives you that frequency and that energy to make you feel good. Yes, it does. You know, so be giving, you know, be grateful, be, and, 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 and it comes back. So your know, mind, and, and that's the whole thing with mind, bodies, and spirit, have the, the have that change your mindset. And look, we're all human. We're all going to have our nasty days. Yeah, we will. You know, but yeah, we will, you know, just kind of get over it. You know, it's, you know, you're not, you know, we're not, I, I'm trying to think of that character that's waking up every day, all happy. No, no, it, it, that doesn't, it's not that's not real, but right. You 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 change your attitude. You change change the way you are. You know, say I love you. Say thank you. Just be just just. Gosh, I am just grateful every day that I wake up and breathe air. Um, stress, yeah, I yeah, they're stressful, but you know, then be cathartic about it. Yeah. And, and and move on. And then the other thing is you you gotta you, you gotta eat well. Look, there's cheat days, and that's fine. Right. Treat yourself. Your mind is telling you you want that that fried chicken. Do it. Just don't do it every day. You know? Right. <laughs> Habits. Well, you know the standard American diet. The first three letters of those three words spell sad. And uh, it's sad but true. So that's great advice. Uh, watch, watch what you eat. Be careful what you think. Be careful of the emotions you process, and be aware of what you put on your fork. And um, yeah, great, great, great advice, Rob. Thank you. So hey, this has been uh, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I know it will serve somebody and reach somebody and, and help somebody. And that's what this conversation, this podcast is all about. And hopefully uh, we will meet in person yes. later this month in Bradenton, Florida. Sounds good. Now we'll keep you posted on our travel plans. No, thank you. And I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to share my story and, and to let people know. And if anyone ever wants to get a hold of me just to, just to talk. Yeah. How can I mean, they, how can they reach, 
How can they reach you, Rob? Um, Canarium R. So K N I E R I E M R at bellsouth.net. Okay. And if you want to text me, 954 560 8516. Just text me and say, hey, I heard your podcast. Do you have a few minutes? That's fantastic. Well, thank you, B, for being open and willing to speak to others. And I'm sure uh, somebody will reach out to you. And thank you so much for being you and being transparent and sharing your story with us, Rob. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right. Have a fantastic day. Thank you. All right, folks, another powerful conversation uh, with an amazing man, with an, an amazing story. And um, I just, my heart goes out to him for what he went through, but he made the right decisions for him and for his family. And he's here and he's healthy. And as you can tell, he's happy. And most importantly, he's, uh, he's grateful. So coming to you from North Atlanta Studios, produced by Mesmerize Media. Um, hey, if you like this content, please consider liking it, sharing it, and, uh, and subscribing. It helps fund the channel and grow our viewership. So you guys have a phenomenal day, and uh, we'll be back soon. Take care.